Hey dudes, welcome back to another video. Uh, we actually made this video a week ago, but it turned out that it had no sound. And it sounded approximately like this. So, we're trying again, and maybe you felt the same as we did, but I feel like time flied over the past two years, and it turns out that we lived here for over two years already. So, we decided to make a little list of the our favorite places that we visited in Malta. I mean, there's a lot of them, so we couldn't include all of them, but we have 10 of our favorite places that we liked and maybe you should like to visit as well. So to celebrate our two years in Malta, we have created top 10 places that we have visited and that we like the most. The top will go from the lowest to the most best place we ever visited and the 10th place on our list is Porto Mosso that is in San Julian's and there is some fucking guy banging so the 10th place on our list is Porto Mosso you can find this place in San Julian's and we went there I think a year ago uh, like, mo uh, like most places that we find for visiting we f found this place on Instagram so we didn't make any video on this one However, on most uh, places that we ever visited, we did. Yeah, we did take a couple of pictures there. Uh, it's very picturesque, it looks really nice. There's some fancy boats and the water is so clear that you can see quite big fishes in comparison to the fishes that you see on the waterfront in Slema. So it's quite an interesting place. It's in a backyard of hotel, so you can go there. You will be able to access this place even if you're not the resident of the hotel. Uh, because it has public opening hours and it's kind of a park-ish feeling to it so you can be there, spend some time there, you can walk around and you can enjoy the park. So it's a very nice place to visit, it's quite calm, there's not usually a lot of people there. So um, even though it's really nice, um, there's a lot more nicer places in Malta so that's why we put it in our number 10. And our number 9 place is Honey Valley. Not a lot of people know about it, even my Maltese friends and colleagues never been there, but it's quite nice. There's a, you can hike around there, there's a lot of greens there, uh, and at the end of the hike you actually can walk up these little stairs and you'll see this little beautiful church that's built into the rock or into the mountain or cliff. So it's very interesting and it's very beautiful. We chose this place because we really enjoyed our time there. When we walked there, it was nice uh, kind of break from the city. Um, it's really, like you say, it's really peaceful. It's really green and there is fresh and it's really nice. You can spend a couple hours walking around there. Uh, there is this tall, tall bridge that you can see from the bottom when you look up. We will insert some pictures here. It's really nice there. So if you have a Saturday or Sunday afternoon to spend, definitely recommend this place. Yeah, and it's called Honey Valley because there's actually a lot of uh, bees there and it actually does smell like honey there. Mm -hmm. and number on our list looks like it's top, top of, of the, the world. world we've been there actually not that long ago and we quite enjoyed the hike up the hill so the top of the world is if you reach the top of the mountain I suppose that uh, you can see the overview of Malta you can see the sea from there yeah I guess it's the highest point against sea level in Malta. If you have a car and you don't feel like hiking, you can drive up there and just walk around the top of the world. You can take your lunch with you. They have uh, a sitting area with the tables where you can take a rest. You can just like have a picnic with yeah. friends or whatever. Um, Looks like a really nice place to go. It is very windy up there. Um, even my camera stabilizers went mental because of it. Also uh, worth mentioning is for your hike up the hill, there's also caves. We obviously made a video about it, so you can have a look somewhere here. Yeah. Number seven on our list is Manuel Island. And this is number seven because we have better places coming up. However, this is one of our favorite places in Malta. Because uh, it's close to our home and you can swim there. There's a lot of nice, beautiful swimming spots. There's also the Manuel Ford that you can 
either walk around and it's quite impressive it's very big you can only visit the inside of the Manuel Ford on the last day of the last Sunday of the month or something like that and now because but of, you probably want to check that out because that was one year old information and now probably it's changed yeah and uh, we never went into the fort because of restrictions and things like that but we still walked around it we filmed it from the top with the drone it looks quite cool and yeah we have uh, we have a video on Manuel Island itself, so that there you can see things in detail, where we like to visit, what we like to do there, and you can decide for yourself if it's, if it's worth to visit. Yeah, um, there's a, you can w walk around there as well if you don't plan to swim there, although it has a lot of nice swimming spots. And in our video you will see something that doesn't exist anymore, and that's uh, Duck Village. It's quite weird, there used to be a lot of ducks and other animals, but it doesn't exist anymore, they torn it down. Personally, I think it's a good thing that they removed it, because it was quite smelly and run down place. I don't think it was very well kept, um, and it was like a little bit not the best. Yeah, it, it's not very sanitary for the animals, so I think the animals hopefully have a nicer place right now. On your plate. <laughs> Number six on our list is this uh, valley in Gozo. We don't really know how to pronounce the name, so we'll not do it. But it's basically this place where it's kind of a crack between two cliffs. The seawater started flowing in and you could swim there and you, you could definitely hike there. It's very beautiful there, very peaceful. Not a lot of people go there. It's in Gozo, so you can even take a bus straight from the uh, port. Uh, go there and then take a hike and come back. This is another place we found out from Instagram So if you follow like let's say Malta Hashtag Malta you'll find all these good places to visit on your own and this one this one was one of those and we took Obviously the trip to Gozo just to see that uh, there and we were really happy about it. Did we made a video on it? Yeah, we made a video and you can find it here as well and um yeah, and number five on our list is the Marsa Scala hike, so the coastline. And I would probably put it in one of my favorite places that I've been to. I would definitely want to go there again and hike around. So you have this kind of Marsa Slokes, Marsa Scala coastline hike. And it's you can hike around on top of these very kind of dangerous cliffs that go straight into the sea and uh, the view is just very magical. One thing to note about this hike, the cliff, is if you take your children with you or if you have a dog and you want to hike around with the dog, for the dog specifically, uh, it should probably be on a leash because the cliff just ends and then it's 100 meters of uh, a fall. Most probably you will die if you fall, so, and uh, there's no gates, no nothing, it's just the cliff ends and you fall so yeah for us it was a little bit weird because there was no railing or no uh, gates for the access because like you say when you walk there and you don't really know or maybe you have small children that don't really watch out um i think it's quite dangerous so be careful but yeah the only thing that they did they put up a sign saying yeah there's falling rocks it's a dangerous place at some points of those uh, hikes you could walk down and you could swim there which could probably be very interesting but it's all rocky so and the rocks could fall on you whilst you're swimming uh, I don't know how likely that is but it's still quite a dangerous place but the views are magical and you can see all the sea so I really enjoy that place it's one of my favorite hikes I've been in Malta and again, you can walk there for hours if you start from one city. Uh, I think what we did, we took a bus to one city and then we walked down along the coastline mm -hmm. to the other city and then we took the bus back. So you can walk for like two hours or as long as you can handle. And it's really nice and magical. So you can walk around the landscapes. There is meadows with little tiny walkways. So it's really rural, so you can be on your own or with your family, so it's really nice. Number four on our list is Blue Grotto. Blue Grotto is a place you can visit on your own or with your family because you can walk around there, you can relax there. It's, it's beautiful because they have this 
UK Blue Grotto. Mm -hmm. uh, we've been there twice. Um, we went there the first time we came to Malta and then the second time when we were actually living here. Um, the second time was a bit more interesting for us because it was better weather. It was in the summer and we took the boat trip through the caves because you can take this kind of boat trip from Blue Grotto where you are to around the coastline and then they will take you into the caves and you can see it from far away and there's also the cliffs so you will be able to look up. The last time when we were there and we were on the boat there were guys climbing up those cliffs. Um, cliffs. Yes. But we made a video on this so you can also find it. Yeah. more detail about this place the boat trips are actually very nice uh, i think they cost e eight euros per person something mm -hmm, like that did. yeah and um uh, they're a bit more expensive than the one the boat trips in gozo um but i'm glad we took them and then there's when you you're done with your hike you're done with your boat trips there's a couple of restaurants there as well uh, there was some ice cream stand and it, you'll get some food there as well so yeah, it's nice when you take your ice cream and you go on the cliffside and watch the, the the sea and other boats and everything is really peaceful that's what we did last time we had a little bit of ice cream and we just kind of relaxed yeah. there you can probably spend your whole day there so there's buses if you take buses like we do but obviously you can go there by a car if you have one as well so it's probably a bit more convenient but the bus will take you right to the place where you need to be and the bus stop is right there so you can go home. I suppose the one thing to note about Blue Grotto is that it's going to be more uh, popular and there's going to be more people there. Uh, like the other ones that we mentioned before would be only for yourself and likely another hiker with a dog but in this case you would see the groups of people coming there, the buses coming there. Like it's very touristy. Yeah, place. there's the big tourist bus that throws out 50 people because it also has a really nice swimming spots that you can ride next to those boats so you mm -hmm. can enjoy the clear water in Malta so if yeah go there, so. yeah now we're entering our top three and the third place goes to Valletta Valletta obviously Valletta has a lot to see and uh, obviously we also made a video on the favorite things that we would like to see in Valletta I'll put it here and yeah there's so much to see the city is beautiful it's very historical it's a must when you come here uh, to Malta only for a couple of days I would highly recommend visiting that over other uh, attractions because Valletta will take your day from in the morning when you leave from where you're staying to Valletta you will start wandering around it's very nice for all the restaurants you will have lunch on the, uh, on the site and then you can keep going because it will keep you entertained for a whole day. The, the whole city is part of UNESCO. Uh, they kept it the way it Malta looked as in the pictures and how it looked in the old days. Because if you go to Sliema, Xira or St. Julian's, anywhere like that, it's quite new and modern. There's higher, taller buildings. But because of the whole UNESCO thing, you're not allowed to make modern buildings. You can't make anything else there so it's quite a big contrast between other cities also there's the Valletta Slema boat ride that you can take and then you can see how Valletta looks from the side and uh, it's very beautiful there I think it's a great connection from Slema to Valletta it only takes five minutes to cross with the ferry and we highly recommend doing that because it's really fast it's really nice experience on its own it's relatively cheap so definitely a must. Number two on our list is Camino Island. We've been to the Camino Island a couple of times with different carriers. You can go there different ways. You can book a boat ride from Sliema. You can hop on fast ferry. You can go there from Gozo. You can, there's a multiple, uh, multiple access to the place. So depending on where you're staying, check your options. Uh, and no, definitely go to Camino. Yeah, the big tourist boats uh, usually will take you all around Camino. They'll show you the caves. The boat actually goes inside the cave and then comes out. Uh, but obviously, if you visit Malta and you're staying here and you have more chances, then obviously it's an amazing swimming spot. Uh, for people like us, you can hike around there as well, but there's 
a lot of beautiful swimming spots. Um, it's sandy on, at the bottom of the sea, which is not quite rare here because everything, every other swimming spot here would have kind of rocky bottoms. But those rocky bottoms. Those rocky bottoms. Yeah, and um, it has uh, white sand, and uh, the water is still beautifully blue and clear. Obviously, one thing to note. When you're going there, it's going to be crowded, it's going to be more touristy, so if you want your time alone, it's not the place to go. However, definitely recommend it because you can find the spots where you're going to be by yeah, yourself. Because it's a, a, such a tourist attraction, there's all these umbrellas to keep you um, in the shade from the hot sun. There's uh, so many of these uh, food vendors, these little buses that you can... <laughs> <laughs> yes, for this, uh, take this free tip from us, uh, pack your own beer or coke because you'll not get over overcharged for it and you can take your food items on your ferries or on your uh, cruise ships, just like pack your backpack with snacks so you don't have to go buy uh, water for two euros on yeah. the island. <laughs> the umbrella place is probably the worst part of Camino especially if you just want to be by yourself. But if you go the other direction just for a couple of minutes, uh, most of the people are not there because everyone somehow for some reason wants to chill with those umbrellas and music and all that stuff. But yeah, go the other direction a couple of minutes and you'll, you'll be pretty much by yourself. Number one on our list. Drum roll. It's Gozo Jeep Tour. We took Gozo Jeep Tour last year when we stayed on our staycation when we booked a holiday and couldn't go anywhere so we were very happy about it the experience was so great that we decided to put it in our first place yeah obviously another video about it there's several options you can either take group tours in these jeeps but we kind of got lucky because we were just two of us the tour guide and his little puppy dog so he was really nice uh, he showed us all around uh gozos with this jeep uh, that has like this open top and you can just see everything and in summertime it's amazing and he showed us the uh, kind of Gozotian uh, secret places that like you probably wouldn't see in the tourist places and the tour was really well organized it took about four hours to finish and in those four hours we went to all kinds of places. We went around the Gozo and we went to Dweira Bay, which is inland sea. So it kind of looks like a lake and it's really cool because the access to the open sea would be only through the cave. And we took the boat ride through it. So we definitely recommend you to watch that video if you're interested. Mostly the guy showed us like some of the most popular places, but also in those four hours, he showed us places that only locals would know. So it was very interesting for both of us and um, we're really glad that we had this tour around Gozo because it has a different look about the whole island. I suppose it's easier to travel when you have not that much information about Malta or Gozo because we did, we certainly didn't have the, re, uh, the time to kind of plan out each, each location and since we don't have a car we wouldn't be able to see as much in one day whereas if you have someone taking you around all the routes and the journey was planned and there was like a map that we were following uh, we certainly saw a lot more than we could possibly find out on our own yeah so it's a great memory that we had and uh, we would definitely recommend anyone going to go to take that jeep tour and find a way to do it because it's definitely worth your stay there so that was our list of our 10 favorite places that we have visited already in malta and we recommend to others who are coming here some apologies about all these uh, banging and construction noises in the background there's not a lot that we could do about it but i think this is where we're gonna end the video right yeah. No, I think so, yes. So if you like this video, you can take it on a Jeep tour. And if you want us to make more similar videos, you can subscribe. That would be great. And we'll see you in the next video. Bye. Bye.